What does your security look like today? Well, in the beginning, it was all about access control and connectivity, virtual private networks to connect remote offices and users, and restrictions on what you can see and access in the network. Then we expanded our security posture by focusing on threat mitigation to deal with exploits, malware, and the unknown that comes with access that is granted. But the network is changing around us. It's no longer a static service, but a rapidly expanding service delivery mechanism. Technologies like virtualization, mobility, and cloud services are serving up applications at a dizzying rate. And then, security finds itself under a barrage of applications that are changing at the speed of business. And let's be realistic, this is only going to increase as time goes on. So we respond and continue to expand security, extend the functionality to understand the people, the applications, and the data they handle. These security applications can be changed and updated and deployed in a consolidated manner, distributed, or anywhere in between. We need security to be as agile as an app for that world and essentially become a service delivery itself. We need it to act like the services it's trying to protect. And how are applications and services delivered? Well, it's built around the functionality of the applications, deployed on a variety of operating systems and platforms that access a common data share, both to put data in as well as receive information on how to operate. These applications and ultimately the data are accessed through a common interface so that there's no retraining of the users and administrators when a new application rolls out. And then we plug in some analysis so that the business has feedback on how the applications and data are performing. This provides the insight to tune and grow the services according to demand, as well as monitor the viability of the applications themselves. And we put this all together for a model to deliver and expand services, a service-oriented architecture. The real power in a service-oriented architecture is that all these components can be decoupled and a process created to ensure new services provide a consistent experience of service delivery for both users and administrators. Now let's consider this model for security services delivery. Instead of applications, we have security applications that can be changed as needed or dynamically added on when requirements change in the environment. This model allows for rapid and dynamic change in security posture that should be looked at as more than just features. Providing agile security, allowing us to maintain well-established access and restrictions, while dynamically adjusting to new and emerging threats, and the ability to expand into the business and create policy around the dynamic nature of application delivery. But there is more to rolling out a security service than just the features and functions you offer. Returning to our security services delivery model, we need a central location to both collect and share data with the security applications. And there must be a way to segment that data into security domains that can limit or share the data where needed, while still maintaining a holistic view. We must also consider how we will interface with the user. Your security service must do so much more than just block or allow. We must actually work with the users to educate and guide their actions according to the policy defined and dynamically adjust to changing needs. Interface is a common way for the security applications to receive feedback so the user is part of the policy development process. As new application services create new risks or limitations to the security policy, the user is made part of the process to redefine the security policy and it needs to be done in real time. Engaging with the user as part of the process is critical to maintaining a security policy. You can't build a proper security infrastructure without understanding how people are using it. So we have the data and a common interface into the security activity. We need to translate the activities into information the business can use. We need a consistent and concise way of measuring and evaluating the security posture of the services being delivered. And I don't mean the thousands of security events that are logged that just become noise as it escalates year over year, 
there is a better way to evaluate your security. And that's by establishing a benchmark for best practices. To strive for improved compliance by measuring in real time the state of the security deployed, right down to the device level. Security can show a measurable benefit as well as improvement over time by tracking how your security features are deployed and being used, and by measuring the degree to which they are successful. It sets the standard for comparing your security actions to peers both in and outside your industry. When new security functionality is turned on and used, there's a way to actually show the benefit to the business, a way to show an improvement over time. It is possible to grow your security services in a measurable way, and it starts with the ability to show adherence to industry best practices and procedure when it comes to managing the security services, and to do it rapidly with new applications means this has to be an ongoing process. It's time to draw a line in the sand, so to speak, and show a path for creating a stronger security deployment to the business for now and in the future. And last, but certainly not least in the layers of our model, the operating system. This represents your future lifecycle management. The OS will dictate how you build a process to upgrade and manage your security over the course of its lifetime. And while Checkpoint offers support for a variety of operating systems and platforms, each with its own unique lifecycle, it also offers a unified operating system. One that unifies the lifecycle management process across disparate platforms. So whether it's a virtual platform, physical device, open server, an appliance, or possibly even a public cloud instance, the lifecycle management is consistent, allowing seamless migration and management across a variety of platforms. Now most of the time, when we talk about a security solution, we tend to start with the platform. It has so many ports and X amount of throughput. You then consider a few features that the platform delivers and end up plugging it in, hoping for the best. Hoping it will collect the right data. And has the right interface to collect feedback and provide access to information in a consistent way that we can extract some business level logic on how security is performing. And I don't mean the 200 attacks it just stopped. That is good to know, but rarely produces useful data about potential gaps or risks you may be facing. Wouldn't it be great if instead we could start our planning at the business logic level before we commit to a deployment? Well, we can, thanks to the service delivery model. By extracting the application and data functions, we could passively evaluate any environment and generate actionable intelligence on a real service offering. We believe in assessing your security posture and applying best practices to confirm we are choosing the right solution based on business needs, not just what a specific platform offers at the time. Security functionality will change over time, so it has to have the ability to dynamically change for tomorrow as new information is collected. And we can pull that all together to create a security services delivery model. Make no mistake, for every security feature or function you deploy as a point product, you're going to have to account for all these layers when evaluating your security. We believe security must be part of a service delivery model, and it must be measurable to ensure security functions and management are constantly being improved. Don't just consider a security feature. Look to build a security service. Expand your security services in a measurable, consistent way with Checkpoint.